Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanat here. Well, today I have a uh, series of fans um, from our friends at Performance PCs and Frozen CPU. I was able to get the, uh, the full suite of Noise Blocker E-Loop series fans. Um, these fans are unique in that they're, they're based on a uh, patented uh, bionic uh, loop propeller that was uh, developed, I believe, in Germany. And I did some research on this bionic loop propeller. It is based on some bionics um, studies that were done on the uh, aerodynamics uh, of uh, birds in flight. And what they were looking for is the uh, turbulence and drag at the uh, wingtips. And they were able to get some insights and some ideas um, from that, those studies. And that's really what yielded this um, um, bionic loop propeller. Um, one of the key things is that it reduces um, the energy consumed and um, the noise. Um, that's one of the key things that, that uh, they got out of that. So they were able to take that from the bionic loop propeller and incorporate it into a, a fan, a fan design. So uh, we're going to take a closer look at them. Um, these fans range from uh, 400 RPM up to 2400 RPM. A couple of them are um, the four pin style, so they're the pulse width modulated uh, versions. And um, what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see, the packaging behind you, they all, they all come in the same style box other than the, uh, the technical specs on them. So uh, I will uh, take you for a look around a box, but then I'll put all the specs together in a table so you can uh, see them and have them uh, in, in one place rather than you know stopping and fast forwarding through the video for tech specs. And then um, what I'm going to do is, you know, that I, you know, it's not uh, just enough to uh, show you the fan uh, and inspect it. And we will take a close look at one in the contents of the box, uh, the one you see on the table behind me. But uh, we will also then test them. We'll put them uh, on radiators and do some uh, real-world testing. Now, uh, Performance PCs and Frozen CPU were kind enough to send me three of each to put through my test beds uh, testing um, that you uh, have seen before or if you're new I have some links up there for a bunch of other fans that I've tested and I'll use that same uh, setup to test them with a couple of uh, overclocks and see how well they perform. Now the other fans that I only have one of um, I, I prefer to have three of them but you know I, I'm pleased and um, humbled that uh, those guys will be able to send me a full suite of these. I'm going to actually test those on 120 millimeter radiators. So uh, those that are uh, low speed uh, RPMs, I do have a uh, RX120 that is designed with uh, eight fins per inch on its rad so that uh, they're designed for low speed fans and so we'll see how they perform there. And then the higher RPM ones uh, that are 1900 RPM to 2400, I'm gonna put those on a black ice um, um, extreme uh, 120 millimeter, it's the generation two radiator from them and uh, that has about 20 to 24 fins per inch so they're designed for the high speed uh, fans. So we'll test them on there and we'll see how well they do. Um, uh, I've never um, really tested uh, or used a 120 millimeter rad um, in any of my systems yet but I have them here available and we'll go ahead and use that in, uh, in testing. And then I'll put all that together in a table to show you how they uh, compare um, and again I'll test them with uh, two overclock settings and uh, see how well they do. So uh, I hope uh, you're as interested as I am to see the results. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look. Well here is the, uh, the suite of uh, fans that we, uh, we have the opportunity to look at. Um, starting from the left is the B12-1. That's an 800 RPM uh, fan. The B12-2 is a 1300 RPM fan. The B12-PS is a pulse width modulated fan and that ranges from 400 to 1500 RPMs. The uh, B12-3 is a uh, 1900 uh, RPM fan. The B12-P is a 2000 RPM fan. That's a pulse width modulated as well and uh, that's actually 800 to 200 RPM. And then the uh, B12-4 is the um, 2400 RPM fan. Now they all have uh, various, uh, uh, you know, starting voltages and power draw requirements, and uh, you know, there's the CFM and the static pressure. Obviously, is different on all of them. And I will, uh, I'll put that in the table, as I said, for you to uh, to uh, take a look at. But uh, let's take a look at one of the boxes. And here we have the uh, E-Loop, 
and down in the bottom right hand corner really is the primary difference aside from the uh, part number at the top of the box. Uh, it shows, um, it, it talks about the, you know, the CFM, shows the, um, the decibel rating um, and also the um, um, sonic or the, the noise um, level that they have in a, and the uh, side of the box has a six-year warranty. These fans all carry six-year warranty. They um, talk about this P2 drive, the uh, Nano SLI2 bearing, and they uh, and the cable management. So those are a couple of things that we're going to take a look at up close on them. The other side uh, talks about the Bionic chassis, straight flow, quality premium fans, and then on the back you will then also see here all of the technical data and specifications. So I'm not going to read this one. Like I said, I'll put it in the table for you uh, to take a look at. Now inside the package for each fan, you get a 9-inch uh, fan extension cable and the, uh, they're sleeved. Uh, this one is out of the pulse width modulated fan. This is out of the uh, B12P and this has a nice black sleeving all the way up to the connector and with heat shrink tubing right up so nicely sleeved cable accessory this one here is a 20 inch extension and then there are eight um, anti-vibration mounts that uh, you would use one on each hole of the fan so you would put another one on the other side of the fan there. And then you have four uh, screws. And these are uh, Phillips head screws. And then you also have a, uh, a nut. It's basically a, a thumb nut that you could screw down uh, to secure your fan into your case. Um, so those are the components that come with the fan. And then the fan itself is nice solid sturdy construction it's all plastic molded plastic frame and you can see here that the reason for the extension cables they are um, their stubs right at the end here with the connector so this actually helps this is the cable management um, feature that the package identifies this allows you to use the right length cable you need to uh, cable up your system so you don't have a super long cable hanging out of your case that you have to manage you can use the long one or the short one uh, or bring your own to it so that makes it nice and easy for uh, dressing in uh, in systems especially when you're using them on radiators and uh, you have a bunch of them together um, just looking around the sides there's some um, this, this this rubber mounting piece that you actually feel through here too there's some rubber on it but of course uh, on the corners it's hard plastic that's where you would use the uh, anti-vibration mounts to go through there to secure your screws through them and then then the unique piece of it is the um, it is a, a six blade design and the fan blades uh, are all connected and I believe that's part of the bionic propeller you'll notice that they're all connected they're not separate individual blades like most fans are um, and they do have some very small notches at the very bottom of each of the uh, fans, um, the fan blades. Actually, maybe you might be able to see it better on this side. And you can see they're here. And also around the rim of the uh, fan housing, you also see um, small notches. And I'm sure that's to help with the aerodynamics of it. And then you have the... Um, noise blocker logo um, with the particular model number on the uh, on the motor mount housing and then the fan wires that are laid within the frame so actually a pretty nice looking fan uh, obviously you know a lot of cases are black and then uh, more and more cases you get to see white so this is a uh, a fan that um, you can use in quite a few applications and uh, you know, for, for looks, obviously, I'm not sure if you can, I don't have to look, I'm not sure if you can pop off this blade, but if you could, you, if you really wanted to, you could uh, paint it, although that'll probably mess with the aerodynamics or the performance of it, but um, 
that is a possibility. All right, so the next thing to do is to get started with some testing. So uh, first what I'll do is take you through the test bed setup and the methodology that I'm going to use and the test program and how we're going to measure everything. So I'll show you all that. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, listen to the fans for a while, for maybe 20, 30 seconds, so you get a good listen. And then uh, we'll put it through the uh, testing and uh, record all the results. And I'll do that for each of the fans uh, in each of the specific uh, test setups. And what I'm going to do is break it up. So the low-speed fans um, that I only have one of will be tested on the uh, RX120 um, radiator in the uh, test bed and then the high speed fans I will test on the uh, Black Ice Extreme um, Gen 2 120 millimeter radiator and then the fans that I have three of each on will be tested on the RX360 um, in the uh, same setup that I've used for testing um, the other fans and in the description below and up above here I will have a link to those um, during the testing so that if you want to compare these fans to others uh, that I've tested in the same setup you get to see that. So um, with that let's get started with the uh, first test. Well guys here's a, a quick rundown of the uh, test bed. It's uh, This is a Demos Tech test bench and on it we have a Asus Rampage 3 Black Edition motherboard with a i7-990X uh, it has a, right now there's a GeForce GTX 680 from EVGA on it. The um, memory is uh, Corsair Dominator uh, GT 2000 uh, megahertz RAM, 12 gigs of it. Um, there is a uh, 500 gigabyte Samsung spin rate um, data disk. The uh, OS disk is an OCZ Vertex 3, 120 gig drive. The uh, fan controller that's on it is a uh, Sky Kazi Master uh, Pro. And uh, the water cooling setup on here is an XSP X2O um, reservoir and pump combo uh, built in. The uh, processor on it, it has the uh, Coolance CPU 370. And then the radiator there is a uh, XSP CRX. 360 and the uh, I use all quick disconnect fittings on this since I, so I can easily change things in and out. Now currently obviously that radiator is set up for testing three fans and that's what I prefer to do um, is test a suite of fans of the same type to show its cooling um, but I also uh, recently received the, the um, XSP CRX120 for uh, low speed fans to be able to check out a single fan and a GTX uh, 120 Extreme with uh, uh, for high speed fans when, when I have just one now. Um, I prefer primarily to have three to test on this 360 red setup because I believe it's uh, probably a fair balance more accurate representation. The fans that are currently on the uh, test bed are the uh, B12-P. They are pulse width modulated fans uh, and their RPMs range from 800 to 2000. So uh, fan channels 1, 2, and 3 are the RPMs for that. And we'll switch through them. 1680, 1680, and same thing, 1680. So they're all running at about 15% less than the uh, than the top rated speed. And most of the fans uh, are, are stated to run around 10%. Uh, these, uh, according to the Kazi Master Pro, are running at right at around that 15%. All right. Now in the test bed we have the Noisebacher E-Loop B12-3 fans. Uh, these fans are rated at uh, 1900 RPM and let's take a look at the uh, fan controller and see how, how they're doing here according to the Scythe Kazi Master Running Pro. It. 1500, 1530, fan on one, 1560, 1560 on fan on two and number three, 1500 to 1530. So they're all running about 15% less 
Uh, they're rated at 1900 RPM. So on the test bench now, we've outfitted it with a 120 millimeter rad. Uh, the rad that's on there now is the XSPC 120. Uh, that one has the uh, sub-8 fins per inch density, so that's uh, specifically designed for low speed fans. And the fan that we have on there now is the noise blocker E-Loop B12-1, which is rated at 800 RPM. And if we take a look at the Skyth Cosimaster Pro, we're seeing it running right now at 690 to 720. So that's around a 15% um, delta. Okay. We now have the uh, noise blocker E-Loop fan B12-2. Now this fan is rated at 1300 RPM. And let's take a look and see what the uh, fan controller shows. It says we're running at about 1110, 1140 uh, RPMs, which is right about 10% of the uh, 1300. So this one is running uh, closer to the uh, uh, rated RPM uh, than some of the other fans that we've tested so far. Those are closer to 15% off from the uh, from the highest rating. Okay, now on the uh, test bench we have the uh, B12 PS model, which is a uh, PM PWM fan and it is rated for 1500 RPM and currently we're running at 1380 so that's just about 10% uh, of roughly 10% of what the rated fan uh, RPM is. Okay guys now on the test bench we have the um, the noise blocker E-Loop B12-4 this is uh, a fan that runs at 2400 RPM and so that's a high speed uh, fan. I also have then, uh, it is running on a 120 millimeter um, extreme black ice GTX radiator that has a uh, 20 fins per inch. So it's designed for a higher speed fan. So let's take a look at the RPMs run on this fan. It's running at about 2,040 RPM. So again, for these higher speed fans, it's running at about 15% of the uh, rated speed on that fan, which is 2400 RPM. Alright, so now we're going to get started with testing all of the fans. And before we get started with the, all of the testing, uh, I'm going to give you uh, a listen to each and every one of the fan sets. So the, the first ones will be the uh, range of three uh, sets of fans for the uh, B12 P's and the B12 3 fans. I have three of each of those, so they'll be run in this configuration. And then uh, all of the uh, other fans are going to be run on the 120 millimeter radiator, so it'll just be a single fan. So you'll be able to uh, listen to these and compare for yourself and see uh, how loud uh, you think they are. And what I do for each of them is I put the microphone, as I'm going to do right now, in the exact same spot I have for all of the fan tests that I've done, and that is directly behind the fans. They're in a pull configuration, as you can see and they are the the microphone will be set on top of the uh, dominator ram
So that's the test bed set up. Now let's uh, talk about how the tests are going to be run. So for testing the fans, basically what we're going to do is we're going to run it uh, at uh, two different overclock settings. One at 4.3 and the other one at 4.6. The uh, tools that we're going to use uh, to test, validate, and record the, uh, the overclock settings and the temperatures is going to be uh, OCCT version 4.3.2. I'm going to run the limp, CPU LIMPACT portion of that uh, stress test for 30 minutes and then I'm going to let uh, the system um, idle for about uh, 30 minutes in between and I'm going to run them at least three times. And then uh, what we're going to do is uh, record the, the temperatures when we're nearing the end of the uh, 30 minutes and I'm going to use core temp. Uh, this is version 1.0 release candidate 4 and so I'll record uh, each of the core temperatures um, uh, at the uh, nearing the end of the 30 minute uh, testing. And then in order to validate the overclock basically you have here the uh, CPU-Z. Um, I already have profiles set up um, in the BIOS and the motherboard for the overclock so they're exactly the same for each time I've established them to be stable. And basically here's the 4.3 overclock running right now. Um, it is uh, the multiplier is 43 uh, against a bus speed of 100 and then you'll see the core voltage in uh, the BIOS actually has been uh, set in the BIOS at 1.4. So you see load line calibration work in there to uh, vary it a little bit. But um, that's the 4.3 overclock. And then when we get to the uh, 4.6, um, there's a different multiplier and bus speed and the core voltage is uh, higher to get the 4.6 uh, overclock stable. So we're going to run the two. And um, before each test, of course, I record um, idle temps and then I also have the um, temperature, ambient temperature of the room actually being uh, been recorded uh, of course before uh, each of the runs. And then also you can see CPU, uh, the LINPAC test, the OCCT also shows the uh, overclock um, setting as well. Now OCCT does have its own set of uh, you know, temperatures that you can uh, read from there and some graphs but in the beginning when I first started doing the testing I used this uh, same core temp uh, application for recording the temp so I'm going to maintain that because some temperature readings uh, from these various uh, tools uh, can differ so in order to maintain it I have to done the exact same set of tools to uh, test all the fans. Alright so that's basically the, uh, the set of tools we're using for uh, documenting the uh, overclocks and the uh, temperatures. And so we'll do that for uh, each of the uh, sets of uh, fans. And then we'll do the exact same thing uh, when we go down to the single, single fans on the 120 millimeter radiators. All right, let's start testing. All right, the next uh, few shots you're going to see are the lineup and technical information and setup of the test bed for the Noisebacher E-Loop B12 1 through 4 and the P and PS uh, version of the uh, Noisebacher E-Loop fans. First up is the technical specs. Uh, basically what I did is I took down uh, each of the um, RPM, the starting voltage, the power consumption, the airflow, static pressure, uh, noise, mean time between failure and warranty information off of the packaging and also I listed whether it was a 3 pin or 4 pin or uh, PWM uh, fan. So here you have in one shot um, the differences between each of the uh, E-Loop fans. Uh, the test bed setup, uh, as you've seen, it's a uh, Asus Rampage 3 Black Edition motherboard with a 990X processor on it. The uh, RAM is 12 gigabytes of Corsair GT 2000 megahertz RAM. I have a GeForce GTX 680 on the test bench, a Vertex 120 gigabyte SSD. The fan controller is a Cosi Master Pro. The CPU block for the water cooling on it is a Coolant CPU 370, uh, outfitted with uh, a bunch of Coolant's quick distance connects to make it easy to uh, remove and reconfigure the test bench. The uh, pump reservoir is a combo unit from XSPC. It's an X20750. The radiators that I used, depending on the number of fans and the speed of the fans, was an RX 360 or the RX 120 for a single fan. 
And I also use the Black Ice Extreme 120 for the high speed fans. Power supply on there is an HX1000. OS is Windows 7 64 bit with Service Pack 1. And then the fixture that it's all mounted on is a Dimas Tech test bench. Okay, for the overclock settings, I tested all fans in a pull configuration. The overclock tool I used was OCCT version 4.3.2. Uh, 30 minutes I ran it for at least and I gave it at least 15 minutes between tests for cool down. The temp readings I took at least three of them and used the median value. Now the core temperature measurement application was core temp version 1.0.0 uh, release candidate 4 and I used CPU Z for verifying the overclock. The overclocks are profiles I have set in the BIOS and the key information for those on this setup is the vCore for the 4.3 is a 1.4 volt. Uh, and the base clock is 100 with a 43 multiplier. The 4.6, to get that I had to put the V-Core at 1.55. Uh, the base clock was 167.5 and the multiplier at 28. So here are the results now for each of the fans. The B12-1 is the lowest speed fan in the, in the lineup. It's 800 RPM and um, you'll see the Delta T at the bottom. Uh, it would not pass the 4.6 overclock. Uh, that guy uh, reached uh, the thermal um, limits and the test died for the 4.6 overclock, so we don't have any results for that one. The Dash 2 was able to successfully make it through all of the testing. It's only one fan, and those are the results um, for the B12-2 fan. The B12-3, I had three of those. They were tested on the RX360. I here see the results for that. B12-4 is the highest speed fan. That I tested on the Black Ice Extreme 120 radiator. And there are the results. The uh, B12-P, I also had three fans for those. That was all done on the 360. And then the B12-PS was done on the RX120. Results for that. And here we have a summary of the results. Now the top table here is the results sorted by the 4.3 overclock. Now these are all the fans that I have tested in the past year um, using the exact same setup and uh, with three fans. So uh, you'll see that the uh, the noise blocker ELU B12 came in second in this uh, lineup. Uh, so at the 4.3 overclock uh, it was uh, one of the best that I've tested this year. The uh, noise blocker ELU B12-3 um, was in the middle of the pack basically um, uh, not really uh, and, and for this particular test at the 4.3 that's where it came out for the 4.6 overclock um, you'll see now that the uh, the noise blockers pretty much uh, fared the same and they both came in at about 43.5 uh, Delta T uh, on load so and so that's near the top of the pack and they are pretty quiet so um, when you get to when you listen to the um, audio tests on it you, you have to decide from yourself so uh, you'll see that's in the top five of the fans that I've tested this year so not too bad I, you know I, you know don't know why it didn't fare as well with the 4.3 overclock but that's what it is and here is the uh, listing of all the fans that I've tested on the test setup with three fans and this basically is just a listed in, in order I have the the highest and lowest uh, result from each of the uh, the tests at idle and under load and then at the bottom I just showed the range of difference between them so about uh, eight degrees difference across the board between the best performing fan and the worst performing fan and then I also listed the prices and actually those prices are as of December 25th of 2012 not September uh, and you can see the Excess PCs and Rulian fan is the cheapest with the noise blocker B12-P as one of the most expensive. Uh, and then what I listed in the table to the right of it is whether uh, it came with screws, uh, if it had an anti-vibration mounts or properties to the fan, uh, if there were any reducers, and then other, and then other that meant like uh, fan extensions or splitters, and in the case of the uh, of the E-Loop series, they all came with screws, uh, they actually had um, thumb nuts, and they have the anti-vibration mounts as well as the fan is designed with some uh, 
anti-vibration properties, rubber in the corners of them. And then they do have a short and long uh, extension adapter because the fan connector on the E-loops is right at the edge of the fan. So you get to choose how long you want your cables to be coming off of it. And then finally here, we have the uh, status of the uh, testing for the fans on one radiator. I, uh, I believe firmly that you should, uh, you know, in, in testing for radiator performance, I prefer to test at least three fans. I think that gives you the best, uh, more reliable results. Here you have one fan, and if there are any issues with the quality of the fan or variations in the RPMs, you know, because they can be as much as 10 to 15 percent less than what the RPM rating is, and you're not going to get uh, that fair. But if you have three fans on a radiator, then uh, you know one fan not performing as well will be made up by the other. So I prefer that. I think that's a better real-world test. So here's the summary of the results for the fans on one radiator. Uh, you'll see the uh, the one, two, and the PS. They're all uh, 800 to 1500 RPMs, and uh, you see the results. And then uh, what I did is on the uh, Black Ice Extreme. The 4 is a 2400 RPM fan, and the B12, since I ran that on the uh, RX360, had three fans. I actually, just to give some comparison, I put it on the radiator as well, the single rad, and uh, ran the test for that. And if you actually go back to the previous chart and look and see, you'll see about 6 to 7 degree difference um, when you're running three fans versus one on, uh, on a, a radiator. So... Uh, so I just give you an idea of you know uh, you know a single rad you're going to really need uh, a high RPM fan or a not that big of a uh, overclock uh, or a hot processor to keep it nice and cool unless you're adding it to an already existing loop then then it you know then it uh, is balanced out by a by the other rads in the loop. So there you have it, guys. Uh, that's the uh, full suite of the uh, noise blocker E loop series of fans. Um, you saw all of the, uh, the, the testing results and the tables that I showed you to give you an idea of the comparison between the fans and also the results of the testing. Now, um, one, one thing to note, um, as I've noted, I think, throughout the, uh, the uh, uh, video is that um, I think the best way to test uh, fans for water cooling radiator is to have uh, more than one of them. The, uh, the fans that I tested on the single rads, although I did get radiators that matched up with the uh, the performance of the fan, uh, those that were designed for uh, low speed fans, that's what I used, and then the high speed fans, but I still don't think that that really gives you, I, I wouldn't put a lot of weight in the results of those. I think the ones that you really, sh you know, if you're going to take away anything are the ones uh, on the, uh, uh, the three fans on the radiator, uh, the RX360. Uh, so um, with that on each of the fans, um, the B12-1, that really is a uh, you know just a very you know it's a very quiet fan and uh, probably it's a decent case fan especially in small systems uh, that you want to have uh, complete silence and uh, the the static pressure is almost non-existent. I really wouldn't consider that a uh, a uh, fan to use in a water cooling setup. Uh, the B12-2 uh, has got a little bit more static pressure. That's an excellent case fan, I think. A very good, very quiet. Maybe you could get away with a couple of those on a closed loop water cooling uh, setup, you know, like an H100 or, or, uh, or even on uh, an H70 or one of those series of fans. Um, they're not bad at all. Uh, again, quiet, but not the static pressure that you would uh, want, I think, on a uh, radiator. Um, then we get into the, uh, the B12-3 and the B12-P. Those are the ones I was able to get uh, three fans of each on, and those I ran in the exact same setup as all the other fans, and you saw the results in the tables there. Now, the, uh, the B12-P um, is a PWM fan, and so that one runs at about 1,000 RPM faster than the uh, Dash 3. Um, you saw it edge out the Dash 3 fan in the 4.3 overclock by about 5 degrees, but in the higher overclock, and the 4.6, they ran the same. They, they provi provided the same cooling. So uh, those fans, I think, are pretty evenly matched. Uh, one's a PWM fan. So for you, those of you who want to you have that in your uh, repertoire, in your case, or on your, connected to your motherboard, uh, you know, by all means, 
and uh, the Dash 3 good and again very quiet those are quiet fans as well and overall you saw that those two were near the top of all of the fans that I've uh, tested in the past so they perform very well and we get to the high speed fans the high performance ones that's the B12-4 and the uh, B12-PS now those fans are uh, you know those those are louder fans certainly you, if you listen to them you can hear them uh, cranking out the uh, the uh, uh, RPMs but uh, those definitely performed well but on a single radiator I, I don't think that's again a fair assessment I would expect them to do good because they uh, you know they do spin very fast and they put a lot of air through their static pressures up there uh, but for me uh, uh, you know it'd be nice to see them run but for me uh, you know noise is a significant thing so I think the sweet spot for me if you're into water cooling um, is the uh, dash 3 and the P um, I think the uh, the Dash 2 and the Dash 4 certainly into P, especially the one, uh, the PWM fans, uh, in a case regulated by your motherboard or some other controller, that would be excellent case fans. You don't have to have them running at uh, the highest uh, RPM and you would get some excellent airflow uh, and cooling in your case. So, uh, so that's my take on these fans. I think they're all, they're sharp looking, well built, and, uh, and, and in my opinion, um, the ones that I talked about there, they do perform well. So uh, a great big thanks to Frozen CPU and Performance PCs for providing these fans so that I can bring them to you. Uh, if you are interested in these fans, by all means, please go to their websites and take a look. I put uh, links to them down in the description below. So I uh, hope you did like this. If you did, please like and favorite. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe. That's it from Ron's and Nut. Thanks for watching.